Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's been a long time since I've posted the videos. Now here I am with this new series and this time we are going to deal with the E-Core transformers, right? But before we step into the E-Core saved uh, transformers and see the circuitry around it, right? Before that, we'll learn the basics of it. First, to build the E-Core itself, how to build that. There are a number of ways to do that. I'll just start with a very fundamental way to build e-cores, right? After that, creation of the winding, right? So if we do just single winding, it will be known as e-core inductor, right? Uh, since primary and secondary are missing, there's only one turn, right? So that's e-core inductor. So let's start with e-core inductor and later on land with the e-core transformer, right? So that's what I'm planning. Uh, now, before that, uh, this is what we will be going to see right at the end of the video. So th this is what an e-core inductor looks like. That's in your screen, right? And these are some line, line fluxes, right? So yeah, this is what I'm going to produce by the end of this video, right? So this is the B field plot. Uh, you can see the values here, right? Uh, so this is B field and this is B vector, right? So this is how it looks like after the plot is generated and the analysis is complete. So yeah, so without wasting any time further, let's just build a new file. Uh, the project is already created here. So I guess you people are now uh, very used to doing these things. We have already done a couple of times in the previous lecture series, right? Now just right click, insert and insert a Maxwell 3D design. So this is our new file. We, will, uh, we are going to learn how to build the e-core first, right? So let's just rename this uh, and name this e-core inductor because that's what we're going to build. And let's say this is test, right? So this is the new file here. Okay. The first thing we'll do is, uh, before we step into building the e-core, we'll just change the view, right? Uh, from the orient right over here to top view right now right now we can see the grid in xy axis xy plane right so this is xy plane and let's uh, have a look at the scale here scale is very small it's just 3 mm scale right now and this is what i would want because uh, for the sake of the learning purpose right uh, i'm not going to take that much of time in analysis because the dimensions will increase the analysis time right and that's not what i want I want a quick analysis so for the quicker analysis smaller dimensions are required right so let's just jump into how to do that now uh, let's draw line segments and create a letter e right in 2d plane so this is a plane xy plane and i will just somehow develop a letter e right that looks like e now later on i will teach how to sweep that along a vector so that we'll get a cuboid shape right or a 3d figure so uh, what we can do is we can either count the grids or even look at the line segment length, right? So this is how we can do three grids in, three grids down, right? Okay, it looks like this is three grids, three grids, three, 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 right? One, two, and three. Okay, one, two, and three. And now we are done. So this is the EC. I guess that's fine. Uh, we can use the shift button or we can use pan right over here, right? To just move this without any uh, deterioration or deterioration in the perspective, right? So I use the shortcut uh, shift in the keyboard. And then by pressing that shift, I can press the mouse button and I can hover around. So. A very quick recap of this right now this is a 2d figure so I can see yeah so this is a 2d figure right uh, let's change it into top view again so uh, the next thing that I would like to do is to develop this E uh, letter or the object that's created in the XY plane uh, I would want this plane to go in Z direction with certain length and that will be definitely uh, equal to the um, the width, right? So let's first measure the width that we have from the major menu right over here. And what we can do is we can use the position and we can see the width, right? 
See, the distance is 0 0.3 mm, right? Yeah, it's 0 0.3 mm. So after I know that it's 0 0.3 mm, just to make it symmetric along the z-axis as well, right, of the equal height, what I would do is I would change the orientation towards the front or maybe towards the right. Yeah. So I guess this is it. Yeah. It's left. Okay. Yeah. So the left orientation for me. I would change the grid. Make sure the grid appears. Right. I guess this is actuate plane. Yeah. Now the grid is there. The next thing what we need to do is uh, we need to select this polyline. Right. So this is the polyline. Let's make it opaque. Now, the polyline have, uh, has now created an object and that is regarded as a sheet, right? Now we, we would want to develop a solid out of this, right? And to do that, we have few methods. Or one of the method is to get a sweep, right? And the sweep is right over here. So this is the sweep along vector. This is sweep around axis and this is sweep along path. Now for the path, we need to develop the path, right? Uh, around the axis, this goes around the axis, maybe x axis, y or z, right? This is a very different thing that we want, uh, that we are not going to want today. So the one thing that I'm looking forward is sweep along the vector because I know the unit direction that I'm going to go with, right? So I'll just select this. When I select this, when I hover around this line segment, right? It detects the points. I can see, right? So just zoom in and see, uh, like just pick one point at random, right? Click there. Now rise towards Z axis. Now by how much? Uh, we already know that it's 0 0.3. So I would just press tab in the keyboard and land in DZ axis. I would type in 0 0.3 and press enter, right? Now it will give me a dialog box where it asks for draft angle and draft type. For now, uh, the default is OK. So do not worry about anything. Just press OK, right? Now, the thing is done. We have actually developed a solid. Let's look by doing fit all and changing the orientation to isometric. Yeah. Now it looks like E core, very perfect E core. So this is it. This is how we develop E core. This is one of the methods, right? Uh, now there are other methods which I will use in further other videos just to give you an idea about that right but for now let's start with this so changing back to top view looks like a perfect e core right changing the grid again to xy now the e core is done the second thing is I will rename this as e core right and the third thing I will do is change the material type so right over here in the properties menu, I will go and change it to copper. If it's, if it's not available here, you can go to edit, press edit, dialog box appears, just type in copper, right? And yeah, type in the cis material copper, right? Choose that one and press okay. Now, the material has changed, we can see here, right? The highlight, the blue highlight over here. Now, the next thing is I need to draw coils around the center leg, right? Now, before we uh, go into that, uh, we need double E-core, another E-core. It will be just a mirror image of this E-core, right? So to do the mirroring, here is an option of mirror that we can see. Now that will complete the design, right? So it's very easy. Uh, just zoom in a little bit, right? And press mirror, then hover around in the edge so it will, it will give you a marking, right? Once the marking is there, zoom in furthermore, just to make sure that you are not missing any spaces over there, right? I click it once, arrowhead appears, and then I go in this direction, just one grid, right? One grid towards the right. I'll just press it and press OK. Now, it has mirror, right? But the problem is if, I do the mirroring, it reverses the original object, right? Now, the original object right over here, it's missing, right? So this doesn't make sense, right? So what we can do is just press Ctrl J. Let's get back to the figure. 
before we do mirroring so always make sure you do the control c that means copying the design i just copied this design right just select this object press control c right go to copper or maybe solid and press control v again that means paste so you you do just copy paste and then rename that e core with e core mirror right so this is the mirror version now since both of them are lying in the same position uh, we can't see both of them at once but make sure you are selecting the e core mirror and then doing whatever we did just now right now i will press mirror zoom in furthermore click it arrow head appears just one grid away towards the right i'll press it okay now let's see let's do fit all and see both the designs are there and there is just make sure that there is no overlapping over there right so yeah there's no overlapping this is fine now we have a center leg two extreme legs just ready for the coil design right now if you want to see in 3d yeah all fine all okay we are good to go right so fit all select the orientation to top select the mirror one i will just hide this for now because this will make the things a lot easier because we need to change the perspective now what we'll do is we'll change the perspective and come towards this side this side right so towards this perspective so that we can build a circular copper coil around the center leg right so whichever view is this now it might be different on yours but this is the view that i want right towards the leg towards the center leg so this side that i'm interested in now i'll just change hidden trial let's see is it front no is it right yeah i guess right so this is the right right orientation now again the grid is missing so i'll just take care of the grid this is xz plane yeah now the grid is there we are again good to go let's see now the, uh, there are again a uh, few ways uh, that we can deal with the coil design right the first one is go into draw menu there is sweep sorry there is a uh, user defined primitive in examples uh, sorry in segmented helix there is polygon helix so we'll select that one now let's see what are, what are the values there right the first one is polygon segment we'll keep that zero for circular surface right for the circular cross section right now this is polygon radius now i'm not sure how much wide wire i would want but this will be very less uh, because see the scale the scale is 0 0.5 right right now so my wire will be somewhere around this much right not that much thick so maybe i'm just guessing it's just half of 0 0.25 maybe one fourth of 0 0.25 right so let me just calculate that so i'm doing heat and trial here so 0 0.25 divided by 4 i guess it's 0 0.0625 i'm really not sure about that right uh but let's just see let's just give a heat and trial first 0 0.625 okay I guess that will work but let's see the start helix radius would be the center leg radius so it must be greater than that right uh, from the scale uh, I would like to guess few things it's greater than 0 0.25 so it must be somewhere around 0 0.125 but greater than that so 0 0.25 and greater than that plus 0. 0 0.5 maybe so 0 0.175 let's see radius change will be 0 pitch and turns so let's do a single turn first or maybe two turn segment per turns let's do 0 for the true surface right now pitch should be greater than the polygon radius two times the polygon radius right two times the polygon radius so 0 0.0625 into 2 is 0 0.125 right so it should be greater than 0 0.125 
that means let's add 0 0.1 it's 0 0.225 let's just do that hidden trial first okay it's much bigger than what I thought right so see the polygon radius is huge right so let's decrease that first it's nowhere close so let's change that again let's quickly change that again so polygon radius we need to change that further so polygon red 0 0.0625 must be divided by 2 I guess it's 0 0.03 0 0.03 1 to 5 somewhere around that now helix radius I guess that's fine let's do that first okay yeah looks looks good looks good but I guess we need to do a few things here let's change the view to isometric now since the uh, direction is not matching that the helix is not in a direction that I would want it to be right so I guess I need to rotate that now here is the rotate option right over here right let's do the rotate now it asks rotate whether to rotate in x direction y direction z direction looking at the axis i think it's the x direction that i want so x direction by 90 degree correct yeah looks fine to me i'm not sure about the position though yeah the position is kind of a little there's a little bit mismatch right so before we jump into that what we can do is let's just move the e core first right and bring this to zero position now how we can do that is by moving the move vector if i hover around this plane right over here right it will allow me to detect the center so this is the center it is kind of detecting that i will do the move vector till jet right now let's see if it's equal in length i'll check the position so this distance is 0 0.5 all right again check the position from this corner to the center again it's 0 0.5 perfect center right so the e core is in center now that's not an issue going to the top view again fit all changing the view towards i guess it was okay it was right okay now that's right but now i can see the helix is not exactly circumferencing the coil right so i need to move in the coil towards the center of the core how i can do that is by possibly again using the move vector but before i do that i would change the grid i would use the move once again i would hover around to see if it detects the center uh, i guess this is the center i'll move that bring it to the center click it again and i'm good to go so this is in center successful yeah so let's just decrease the transparency here so that I can see the intersections clearly right let's do this much okay yeah now I can see the radius the helix radius is not that large enough because it is kind of intersecting right over here so for that I will go to create in the polygon helix in the create user right I will increase the start helix radius to some larger values maybe uh, not 0 0.175 but 0 0.2 okay this is still smaller 0 0.25 maybe yeah now it seems like it's perfect so the intersection is not there which is good right now i guess the polygon radius is kind of good to go right not that much hues so let's just check if everything is fine from the top view okay something is not fine because we need to shift the coil more towards right right now to do that again changing the grid selecting the coil structure using the move menu selecting i can pick it from anywhere right 
I can click here going towards this direction now it is showing the trace I'll just click it correct now it's good to go right perfect 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 from all directions now yeah the coil is good so let's change the direction